Welcome to Gaming Tips. Today we're covering a video about Arma 3 settings and how we can gain better performance and FPS within Arma 3. Alrighty, so within this video I'm going to be editing certain files, I'm going to be changing some options, and every single one of these changes is completely optional. You do not have to do any of these and you can do certain things individually from one another, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start with Arma 3. We're going to start with the launcher here. So go ahead and open your Arma 3. So once you have your Arma 3 launcher open, what you want to do is come down to the parameters section. And you're going to see these basic options. So skip logos at startup and show static background. I like to turn these on because what this does is it creates for a faster loading time. Pretty much removing any background art and things of that nature within the game during the loading. So... That's not necessarily a performance increase, but you'll find that you have faster load in times. So we'll come down here to all parameters, which is the advanced section. Alrighty, once you've navigated to the advanced tab, what you want to do is check this box for CPU count. We're going to input the amount of CPUs you have. So for example, I'm on a quad core system, right? Basically, I would put four. But the trick is, if you use hyper threading, what you want to do is double that value. So I'm on a quad core system, but I'm going to put 8 because that's double and I'm using hyper threading on the system. Then we want to come down here, enable extra threads, and check all three of these boxes here. If your system allows it, we also want to come down here and check the hyper threading box as well. This is fairly important, but it's going to be different on all your systems. A lot of people say the windows allocator is the best but it will be totally dependent on your system for me i like to choose the intel tbb4 allocator then we're going to come down here and we're going to go to system memory limit now this is an optional thing as arma will predetermine this but since i have 32 gigabytes of ram i'm going to check this and a good value to set this at is about maybe that of 80 percent of your ram so for example, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to get 80% of that and enter the value. I'm just going to go ahead and guess. I'm going to enter 24 gigabytes of RAM. If we come down here to video memory limit, you can find the video memory limit for your GPU and you can input a reasonable value in here. I'm on integrated graphics. This is about as high as I've ever seen it go. So I leave it at this value. If we continue to scroll down further, we can come here, select world, and select empty. This will just help your loading times as well. We're also going to select no logs. We're going to scroll down further. Come down here to no pause. We're going to check this box. What this does is when you tab out, it keeps the game running, allowing you to tab back in without having an FPS drop but also avoiding a lot of the common crashes we have in Arma 3. We're also going to do no pause audio. What this will do is it'll keep the audio running. So this is very optional, but if you want to hear what's going on in game while you're tabbed out, you can select this option. We're also going to come down here and select no land. What this does is it runs the loading screen without land in the background, essentially making for faster loading times. So once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and open Arma 3. Once you've opened Arma, navigate to the Options tab and select Video. We're going to go through each option step by step so you can sit back and follow along with me. To start, always keep your sampling on at least 100%. Never go below. You can go above if you want, depending on your PC or if you have a high-end PC. For texture, I like to keep this on standard. Similar thing, if you have a high end PC, you can raise it, but I never ever would go below standard for texture. For objects, you can go very low, but I would recommend you just go standard. Terrain, I actually prefer to keep terrain on very low. I find there's very little of a difference between very low and very high, and for that reason, I'd rather get the one or two FPS increase from that. For shadows, I like to disable this. Particles, I like to put on low. Clouds, on low. PIP, I actually do like to leave this on standard and I'll come here and I'll put this to about 500. HDR works along with the uh, dynamic lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on low. 
I'm also going to put dynamic lighting on low and I'm going to disable the water reflections. Coming up here, if you have shadows on, you can adjust it with the slider, but for me, I'm going to bring this all the way down. Your overall view distance controls the overall sight that you can see of the ground. So I'm going to set this to about 2000 and I'm going to set my objects to about 1500. Objects is the rendering of all houses, players, cars, things of that nature. We're going to come to display settings. If you go down to vSync, you can set this to disabled or enabled. What enabling it will do is set your FPS at whatever your refresh rate is for your monitor, and it will also prevent image tearing. But I do keep this disabled as you do get an FPS increase from disabling it. Coming over to AA and PP settings, I like to put my bloom to zero, radio blur on zero, rotation blur on zero, depth of field on zero, and I like to keep my sharpen filter anywhere between 50 and 100 just giving me an upper hand when I'm in PvP and allowing me to see things more clearly. Coming over to ambient occlusions, we're going to go ahead and disable this and you'll notice a massive FPS increase. We're going to also disable caustics, although this doesn't do too much for FPS. We're going to come down here and disable this and you'll see once again a massive increase. In the PPAA settings, we're going to come here and disable this, but you can also put this on the FXAA standard, and you will get just a little bit of a decrease over disabled. For the filtering, we're also going to go ahead and disable this, and you'll notice there is barely an increase, so this one is completely up to you, as there's not much of a benefit in disabling it. Things like brightness are completely up to you, this is just purely for aesthetics. And we're going to go ahead and move on to the Arma 3 config file. So now what you want to do is close out of Arma and make sure the game isn't running in the background. We're going to open the file explorer here and come to documents. In documents, you're going to see Arma 3 and Arma 3 other profiles. We're going to go ahead and click Arma 3. You should see a file named Arma 3 config file as you've seen here. This may be white. If it is white for you, what you can do is right click, click open with, and just click WordPad. Once you've opened this, you'll see some of the settings we put, such as detected CPU cores, things of that nature. You also see your CPU. But we're going to navigate down here to GPU max frame ahead and GPU detected frames ahead. Remove the value that you had entered here and just type 1. And we're going to come down here to GPU detected frames ahead and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to remove whatever the value is you have entered in here and we're going to set 1. So what this does, it pretty much sets an unlimited max frames ahead and detection frames ahead cap for your GPU. And typically you'll find a little FPS boost in this. On high end PCs, this may not affect you too much, but on low end PCs, this may be the lifeblood of your system. We're going to go ahead and click save here. And we can go ahead and cancel out of this. If you come back to documents and select Arma 3 other profiles. Once we open this folder, we want to find the Arma 3 profile that does not contain the dot bars as seen here. So we're going to right click this and click open with notepad. Once we do that, we can scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to find FOV top and FOV left. Essentially, this is your only means of FOV adjustment within Arma. So depending on your monitor, depending on certain things, you may want to adjust this. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link below to a website that gives you an automatic adjustment. So you can select you want an FOV of 80 and it'll give you the FOV top as well as the FOV left for an easy adjustment. Additionally, a better way to get better FPS on virtually any game is to open your task manager. So we're going to come down here and type task manager. Once we have that open, we're going to navigate to the details tab. We're going to find Arma 3 by 64.exe and we're going to right click that. Set priority to high. 
can also do above normal. Certain games will prefer above normal and will actually run worse on high. So this is something you can play with. You can also come down to set affinity and I recommend actually turning off CPU zero. All the Windows programs and things of that nature extremely clutter up CPU zero. So turning this off can actually net you a small benefit anywhere in the range of one to five FPS. We're going to go here and click OK. Another trick you can do to get virtually better performance in every single game is to come here and type advanced system settings. When you open this, locate the performance tab and click the settings button and click adjust for best performance. You can also come here to advanced and you will see your virtual memory. If you have 16 gigabytes or lower, I will not recommend doing this, but if you're on 32 gigabytes or a 64 gigabyte system, you can come here, click change and click no paging file, set and click OK. What this will do is remove your virtual memory, which essentially speeds up your computer because virtual memory is a little bit slower than your physical RAM. Your physical RAM is 1.5 times faster than virtual memory. So this may help in a lot of applications. We're gonna click apply, click okay, and that should be good. For those of you who are on low end PCs or maybe don't have a lot of RAM, I'd highly recommend downloading Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This application will automatically clear the standby list RAM on your computer, essentially giving you a more reactive system and giving your RAM more space and dedication to the games and activities that you may be doing on your computer. So for people with low-end PCs, I'd highly recommend this application. Please look into it. You got to set everything up to your own standard. But I'd highly recommend this for anyone, even on a 32 gigabyte system. So I may do an additional video about Process Laszlo in the future. But for now, I hope that helped you guys. Have a great day. And thanks for watching.